Is it really necessary to brew Coors Light down as low as 34 degrees? Do the mountains really need to turn blue when your beer's as cold as the Rockies? You be the judge. Frost Brew Coors Light, the world's most refreshing beer. The Seahawks Redskins game afforded us some really good opportunities to talk a little chalk talk, a little X's and O's. And I thought Jim Moore did a nice job of it during the game. Many times looking at Jim Hazlitt's blitz picture and how the Seahawks were to perform against it and protect it and what you could run against it. I want to go back to a play that I thought was a really good play. I could teach you some good football here. It was the first and 10 play at the plus 20, down 7-0 after Brandon Browner's interception. The Seahawks come into the red zone. Now, one of the first things I think I've always talked about in these chalk talk situations is personnel. What are you looking for in your personnel? Secondly, when you come up into coverage as a quarterback, when you scan man or zone, you're going to look at your corners, you're going to look at your safeties, they're going to begin to tell you some of the picture. When Daryl Bevel calls this play in particular, he's hoping like mad on that sidelines that the Redskins are going to be in man-to-man -man coverage. This is a man-to-man -man beater. This is exactly, if I get man coverage and I'm T-Jack or I'm Daryl Bevel after I've signaled it in, I am over there just doing a little dance because I can't wait to take the snap and execute this play. Now, you know the Redskins are in man-to-man -man for a couple reasons. Okay, number one, they're press coverage. And as you watch that play, you'll notice those eyes of the DB never come off the receiver. Now, sometimes those guys can press and bail and show you different looks. When they're locked in and they're staring at that receiver and they're not looking at the quarterback, a great indicator, it's man-to-man -man coverage. Okay, secondly, as is always the case, it's a numbers game. When we get to talking these plays and taking advantage of a defense, and you look at the alignment of the Redskins here, and immediately T-Jack and, and the guys in the backfield know, ooh, this is pretty favorable. They've got kind of three on two over here. It's going to be man free, but the safety keeping a close eye on Sidney Rice and Mike Williams. And over here, if things shake out appropriately, well, we could have a two on two matchup. What you also need to look at, and these are the little wrinkles, these are the little details that you don't really notice until you go back a second or third time and study it. Look at what the Seahawks did on this play. Look at who your right tackle was. You know who your right tackle was? Yeah, that's the big redhead. It's not Breno Giacomini. They move him into right guard. Why do they have McQuiston at right tackle? Well, there's a little key for you, because that guy can move better in the open space than can Breno Giacomini. So they end up running. Okay, T-Jack under center, they end up running a little swing screen, a little man swing screen where Marshawn's going to come out of the backfield running the screen pass. Okay, another nice little wrinkle. They get Michael Robinson to come across the formation. Well, what does that do? That takes his man coverage out of the play. So now what do I have here? Well, I've got Zach Miller, my tight end, and i got Marshawn Lynch, okay, out of the backfield against a linebacker against a strong safety, and then this is the pass rusher. This is Ryan Kerrigan, and as a quarterback, I know that's my man to beat. It's three on three, quarterback and end, running back and safety, Zach Miller on the linebacker. They run the swing screen, Kerrigan ends up coming, Okay, T-Jack beats him with just a perfect throw, a perfect little touch pass to Marshawn. He's out of the play, and now it's two on two. Now it's Zach Miller, and it ends up being our big boy McQuiston, who gets out into the open field, two on two. You can't ask for anything more. In the numbers game, in the matchup game that is the NFL, I want to get one on one, I want to get two on two, I want to get a number situation where it's my guy against your guy, Hey, and Zach Miller's getting paid a lot of money, and I know a lot of people up in arms about the lack of touches and the lack of catches. Well, he gives you another touchdown. Why? Because he does a fantastic job owning the linebacker. McQuiston does an even better job as a 300-pound tackle where you're taught, hey, get out there and don't be cute. I don't want you dance to be the dancing bear. You go out there, McQuiston, and throw your 300 pounds, pounds right into the legs of Landry, the, the safety, you knock those two guys out and it's easy pickings from there. So a couple things, the right call at exactly the right time, anticipating man coverage, get to the red zone, hoping the Redskins are going to run a man concept in a two back set where you've run Marshawn, boom, you get it. Secondly, execution. I move my more athletic lineman to tackle, knowing I can get him into the open field. And the number three is a quarterback. Don't panic, man. You beat that end with your throw. Marshawn will do the rest. A big play that made that game 7-7. Seven to seven.